Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you another thing that you can do with P5 Play, which is a library for P5.js that helps you make video games. And um, the thing I'm going to show you is kind of like a strategy that I came up with for making a maze-like game work. So the idea is like something like Pac-Man or some kind of like top-down adventure type game where you're walking through corridors, things like that. It I don't know, I was kind of confused by how to make this happen because uh, if you look at my game right now, it works, but I can move through the walls. But then if I turn on all of the collisions, then it seems like it's difficult for a, a guy that's the exact size of the corridors to move because he's always colliding. And so it, it ended up being a little complicated for me. And so I came up with a way that seemed to work well. So I'll, I'll show you that. Let me look first at the code that's here that's doing this version where I can move using the arrow keys, but I'm walking through walls. So the first thing is I just have a variable that's going to store that sprite. And then I have two variables for the images, uh, the image for that sprite and the image for the block. I, I load them in this preload function, but you could do that when you're creating the sprite instead. It would be maybe a little simpler. Um, I make a canvas that's 300 by 450, but it's pixelated times two, so everything's twice as big as you would think. So even though the sprites are 32 by 32, they show up as 64 by 64. And then I do a couple things just to set up this world. Um, they're all based on all sprites, so it affects all of the sprites in, on the screen. Uh, I make sure pixel perfect is on so that when it scales up by two, it doesn't get blurry and then nothing should be rotating. So I added that in there. And then the last thing is kind of an interesting one and required for everything that I'm going to show you, which is tile size. That means anytime you talk about a sprite on the screen, it's going to be times 32. So uh, that just says these, this is the size of all the sprites on the screen. And so you can see here when I create the avatar sprite, instead of putting 32 by 32 as its uh, width and height, I put one and one. And the same thing for the position, instead of making its position uh, 32 pixels over and 32 pixels down, I do one and one. Uh, it's funny because it's not actually 32, it's 64 because it's, it's times two, but we can just ignore that and just pretend everything is 32 pixels. So um, that that actually looks kind of simpler, right? Because the whole if the whole game works on kind of blocks and one step increments, then this tile size comes in really handy. Uh, then I set the image for the avatar to the, the image that I loaded earlier. I do the same thing for the brick basically, but the brick is not a sprite. A sprite is um, one individual that I'm gonna reference later. I'm gonna move him around and so on, but bricks, there are many bricks, they all look the same and I don't ever reference a single brick. So I create it as a group instead of a sprite. And uh, again, I assign it an image. And for now it says collider equals none. And that's why I'm able to walk through the walls. Uh, the last thing is I say that this tile is going to be called at sign. And when I make the tile map down below, anytime you see an at sign, it's going to show a brick. That's the green, green blocks. So the tile, you know, I'm creating this new tiles, uh, object here. This is basically, um, how we do this tile map. So the first thing is the first argument is an array. And if you look, it's an array of one, two, three, four, five, six items. And there's about, I think there's maybe like 10 across. I'm not sure, but um, so it's it's six items. Each item is a string of characters. And anytime an at sign shows up, that's a block. Anytime nothing shows up, or I could use a period, uh, it's an empty space. Could also do this for many different tiles. I'm just keeping it simple by just doing tile or no tile. Uh, and then down here, I've got X and Y position of the first tile uh, and the width and height. Again, we're just using the ones to say it's one tile wide and one tile high. Uh, one thing to know is that everything is drawing from the center of the sprites. So it's kind of cut off here. If I wanted to have this actually line up with the edge of the screen, I could do uh, half of a tile, right? So now uh, half everything's moved over half a tile and I'd have to do the same thing with the sprite. So instead of one, it would be 1.5 and so now he's in the right spot okay so now that i fixed that um we'll just look at the last part which is the draw loop and it just basically clears the screen and just handles the four buttons so uh pressing up will decrease its y position by one um left will decrease its x position at, by one and then so on for right and down so that's how this is working with the keyboard okay so um what's the big deal i guess you know let's try the different colliders so there's kinetic let's try the kinetic collider and see how that works okay so it's not doing the thing it's sort of snapping in between tiles it works over here but as soon as it encounters a tile it gets weird 
Uh, what other ones are there? Dynamic? Let's try dynamic for the tiles. Okay, this is an interesting game, but it's not the one we want. <laughs> so dynamic is affected by other sprites, so that's not going to do it. Uh, we've got static, which you would think would be the one. Um, and yeah, well, did we already do that? I don't know if we already did that, but it's not working. So um, I think that's maybe it. Let's take a quick look. Uh, so where I'm getting this from is the P5 play sprite. And then if I look down at the bottom, I've got, um, I think, is it basic properties? No, let's look. Collisions. Nope. Um, physics. Okay. So there's dynamic, there's static, there's kinetic, uh, kinematic, and none. Let's make sure I got that right. Kinematic. Okay. So yeah, that's not working either. So um, let's keep it at none. And what I'm going to do is uh, a couple things. It would be nice if I could say, anytime you press the up key, only change its position if it's okay to move into that position, right? So when I press the up key here, it shouldn't allow it because I should just not even run this line because there's something in the way. So I'm going to make a function that looks like this. Um, I'm going to say if they press the up key and this function um, let's is open let's say is open right that's it's going to return either true or false if the position at uh, avatar dot x avatar dot y minus one which is the position we want want to go into if that position is open then and the pre the key was the up key was pressed then do this right so i'll do that on each of them i'll need to make that function i just invented that so it's not uh it doesn't exist and of course each one of these is going to be a little different right so it's um the position to the left the position to the right and the position just below where we are so um i think i'm missing I'm missing some parentheses here Let's see some red underlines complaining okay so if i save it's not going to work because there is no function called is open so it crashes as soon as i hit something but uh there's there, there i need to make that function but there's also something else i need to do um the function is going to take these two numbers right and it's going to look up on the map where uh, whether that has a tile in it or not that's the idea of this is open function and to do that i want to i want to be able to jump into this array and look at the position and say is that an okay position so instead of putting this array right here what i'll do is i'll make a variable um I think maybe I could just do that right here, right? Like this would be indent a little bit. So this is the map and, um, and then over here where I would normally put the array, I can just put the name of that array, uh, that the name of the array that contains the map. So it actually, uh, kind of looks, looks nice. Makes, makes a lot of sense because I'm just saying refer to the map that I created above. This makes it possible to have this function look up the position in this map that we're, we're uh, asking if it's open. So let's make that function. First of all, let me just save and make sure this still works. Um, I saved and it does show the map. So that means it, it worked, moving the, moving the uh, map array into a, an actual variable seems to have worked. Okay, let me make that function and that'll be pretty much it, thanks. So uh, it's called is open. It takes two arguments. We'll say they're called X and Y, and I'm going to, I'm going to, um, what I want to do is look up in the array, whether that tile, ha whether there's a tile there or not. So let's say I want to find the tile in the array. So it's a two dimensional array, meaning it's got um, rows and columns. So let me just say, let's say I'm going to look it up by row J and column I. Well, what are, what are J and I? I think I need to set I equal to X, but uh, I wanna make sure I round down, right? So I can give it any number here, but uh, these are 
so I'm in not if you remember I added 0.5s here and 1.5 here so these are actually not whole numbers and if I'm looking up things in the array they need to be whole numbers so I can't just put x here or look this up by x and y because I'd be trying to index the array by numbers that have decimal points in them which isn't going to work so what I'll do is round them down so that's the only reason I'm making new variables here j and i I could otherwise just do uh, x and y but we know that those variables at least in this game they're always something 0.5 so that wouldn't work when we're trying to look up the row and column so now we should have uh, you know even if it was at 0.5 uh, we would round down to zero so we'd have item zero uh, of the or column zero or row zero depending on which one we're talking about so uh, the last thing is to say and this is really kind of condensed but let me explain how this works so return tile equals nothing so what that means is this is going to return true or false right we've already said that that's what this function does and how do we this needs to evaluate to true or false so we've gotten the tile out of the array and we say if the tile is equal to nothing that would be true if the tile was equal to something that would be false so i'm returning literally true or false with this uh, you know, that's a kind of an elegant way to do it, I think, but maybe if it's too confusing to do something like if tile equals uh, nothing, then return true, else return false, that'll work as well. So, but you know, this other one's kind of sweet, you know, so, but uh, if it's too complicated to understand, this one should make more sense. Okay, let's save and see if this works. So something's crashed. Let's look at the, uh, it says maze is not defined. Okay, so I called this maze, but I called this map. So let's try that again. Okay, and there we go. I'm pressing left, it's not going anywhere. Down, it's not going anywhere. So um, one thing I could do just to understand this a little bit more is to say anytime there's something in the way right because this would be that there's nothing in the way and it returns true i could also just do a console log here and save the message blocked so i'm going right 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 you see a message down there says blocked down 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 it says block so that's it it's working uh I, you can stop here to understand how this is working again i'll just explain I, I made a variable called map that actually has the array that gets fed to the tiles constructor and the reason why i did that was so that i could make this other function over here that returns a true or false and the true or false depends on whether or not there's an open space at the x and y that it's given so uh, the things to do now are to make some comments here. So I'd put some comments to describe what I just said so that when I look back at this, I know that this function is something that returns a true or false based on whether X and Y have a tile there or not. And um, I, think, I think that's it. The last thing is I'll just show you an extra thing, which is when I move, he just jumps a block. So is there a way that I can get him to kind of move a little more smoothly? Um, because remember, we can't move in tiny increments because this only, this whole idea only works if we're jumping block by block. And, um, that's the kind of thing I'm describing. If you're like, well, I want him to kind of like glide around as I hold down the button, that's a different setup and probably won't work with what I'm showing, but we can get him to move in a nicer way. And so let me just try this. If I, let me try it on the right section. So what I could do is do instead of, um, just increasing its X position. I could use the move to method and um, it takes two arguments. One is uh, the location that you want to move to and then the other is the speed. So I, you know, normally you'd put like the mouse and that's that contains an X and a Y. But in this case, I, you know, I need to create a vector. So I need something that has an X and a Y built into it. So I'll do create vector. And if this is unfamiliar to you, create vector, you can check the other video that I posted this week uh, where I show how that works. But um, avatar.x and avatar.y, but actually I want x plus one. 
So this is essentially just making a single variable that contains an X and a Y. And that's what this function move to is expecting. So that's the position move to uh, X plus one and just Y. And then the last thing is a uh, speed. So if I put one here, let's see what it looks like. Uh, if I press right, I still jump pretty quick. Let me try a very small number like 0.1. So there we go. Now he's he's moving. Now, of course, the other directions aren't doing that, but uh, you could just do the same thing for the others. Instead of just increasing their X position, have it slowly move to that X position. And I think that's it. So uh, good luck.